All right, we are recording. Go ahead. You're still on mute, Mr. Levins. Bueller. I walked away for a second. I don't know. Bueller. And our man on the street, Mr. Levins. Mr. Levins. <laughs> <laughs> How's that weather out there, Pat? <laughs> Breaking news, Kathy Fern. Uh... Uh... Okay, sorry about that. Okay. okay. I, had to, I had to rush home because the storm was coming. I needed one more day with the top down to drive home. Yes, ah. So okay. I jumped in the car and sped home. Okay. Hopefully you're home and not driving still. Yes, yes. So uh, we're starting off with TFA. Yep. I think the great news is there's actually a cement path connecting the two uh, areas. Yep. And the landscaping is in place also. It looks really nice. What we'll be waiting on is the electricity in the poles. So that part of it will be continuing moving forward. When you say the landscaping is in place, it, is this all with the salt dome walkway? So the cement is laid, the landscaping's done, the lighting's going in? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the pathway, just the pathway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, other news at the Freshman Academy is um, we did have a roof leak. The roof leak caused some uh, other damage. The good news is the roof leak is fixed and we are in the process of figuring out when they will repair and who's responsible. And uh, we're pretty confident that they will be repairing that also, but that's where we're at. So, <laughs> I think the idea that the Freshman Academy was built for 100 years and a varsity campus for 300 years might be true. Um, so that's the two other things. The other big issue over there has been the uh, football field, or I should say the athletic field. And the good news is it is the, the sod is taken and it's grown in and it's building real nice thanks to the wonderful weather we've had out there for growing. Um, the bad news is they're having trouble finding a company to stripe it, which doesn't make sense because they had already previously striped it. So, but we're not in a big rush to get the striping done anyway, because we won't be using it till the fall. I mean, to the spring. Um, so I think those are the three top issues that have been going on at the Freshman Academy uh, that I can recall and I have in my notes. Did I miss anything? Um, I have, there was an issue um, with the heating which was being addressed at the yeah. last meeting. Yeah, and that has been addressed and it has not been as cold. But on the other side, it hasn't been as cold outside. So right. we'll get more of a read on that next week and as we move into December. So it's, and hard then, to, it's hard to kind of fix heating issues when you can't necessarily test it. Right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to um, the field, there was that whole, whole issue with the sprinklers and the hoses to make yeah. sure that it was watered, is that all good to go? Yeah, we purchased the equipment and it's it's going to arrive. And we also purchased the uh, gator type vehicle over there that'll work for the, uh, the plowing and so forth. So yes, that stuff is all moving forward. Come, we'll definitely have all that in place come next, well, really June, July, next summer. So we keep it, you know, healthy. And we needed to establish a separate contract with Aramark for water maintenance. Have um, we done yeah, that? that again will be something that will be you know, moving forward before the project is complete. Uh, I talked to our Aramark OM, Tony Beeler today, and he said that that process is still kind of ongoing. I mean, the issue is, like I said um, before, like the company we have in place does not typically do watering. And so we're trying to figure out how that works still. So that's still in the kind of negotiation field, the negotiation area, and trying to find that company that's going to do that. That's all I had for the Freshman Academy. Great. Um, on the varsity campus, a lot, lot of good stuff happening. Um, we have the library project well underway. That is looking really good. It's completely emptied thanks to our security uh, and custodial teams for stepping up and really making that happen. We also have, uh, and, and it's, the floor is completely gone, all the nasty carpet's gone, and hey, they are uh, making, hey, they are make, uh, Pat, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, sure. who, who's running the meeting? 
Well, Chris is the chair and I'm just doing the report. Okay, Chris, can you enable uh, sharing at all? Because I'm trying to put a picture of the library up there, but I, you have to enable sharing. Someone's going to have to walk me through it. I don't. I didn't set this meeting up. No, I think it's Kathy that needs to to do that because she has the one link for all the meetings. Yeah. Kathy, can you uh, enable sharing for me? Kathy. Gordon, is, is that really your studio? Kathy, you there? <laughs> Gordon, is that really your studio? Can you hear me? Yeah, is that really your studio? <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Because you could put pictures behind you and stuff. But that's I'm awesome. put pictures of anybody up. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, Kathy, you there, Miss Fern? Okay, keep talking, Pat, and I can, I can enable them when she comes back on. Okay, I'll put the pictures in. Can I ask a question about the books? I don't know yeah. if that's what you were going to show, Principal G. Were you going to show? show the... I have an empty library shot, and then also the books. Okay, that's. I was going to ask about the books. I mean, we're ultimately going to get rid of them, right? Well, we got to talk about that. I mean, because there, um, I, I want my, I want the faculty to be able to go through them before we do get rid of them. Some of them are obsolete; they really are. But some of them are aren't bad at all. I mean, I got no, it. no. That's what I'm saying. The idea yeah. is when you know this the the team can come in and go through them. Yeah. Grab what they want, but the obsolete ones. We we need to get rid of stuff, right? We're not. Yeah, I know. But there were a lot of really good books in there. Okay. Um, like I I'll, I'll give you a good example. Like there was like a lot of cookbooks, and now. I don't do cookbooks because Pinterest is out there and you can, you can get a great recipe anytime you want, but some people are into to cookbooks and they would love that whole section of cookbooks. And there were some great poetry books. And even though, you know, an E.E. E. Cummings book wasn't taken out since 2005, they were saying, you know, you need to get rid of it. And I'm like, well, a lot of these books are, are pretty good. So I know what they were saying, but I still, I still think uh, um, that our faculty and staff would like to go through those books. So we can wait. Right now, I think it looks really nice. Um, and it, it's kind of decorative the way it is. And so I think we can hold off. It's not really that, that space uh, consuming at all. Kathy, there yet? Kathy? Let me call her. Go on, go on uh, Pat. Pat, so what's next for the Library Media Center? We, the carpet's up, now what? Pat? Pat, we lost it. Oh, there he is. I got kicked out for some reason, but I'm back. All right, so right now the first thing is just getting the floor completely done. And so the floor is, like I said, it's gonna be, they made amazing progress. All the carpets were ripped out. Now I meet with an architect tomorrow to decide kind of what direction we wanna go in and how we're gonna divide the space. So there's, I have a meeting, I was supposed to have it Friday before the meeting, but he had to cancel last minute due to an emergency. So um, I meet with him tomorrow and to kind of see what is, what options are available to us and what direction we wanna go in with developing the media center, whether it's, uh, you know, we kind of have an idea where our collection is gonna go. Uh, we're thinking about laptops instead of having permanent stations. Yeah, that's the current picture of the library. Um, I tell you what, when, when it's emptied, it's an amazing space. So it really becomes this kind of like uh, palette that you kind of want to really, what can you do? What can you do? So, you know, we have some dream projects and then we have some other options. But obviously, once I know more, I'll come to the LSC you know, next month to have more details about what direction we want to go and how we want to see that library develop. Um, but if you look, we're kind of, and it, it's, so I'll get, uh, tomorrow I'll have more information, but if you, on the far, going to, way back to the windows over there, the glass windows, we're thinking about the print collection over there, possible uh, little school store on the other side, circulation center. We even thought about maybe a type of meeting theater area on the far right, where you could have like host 60 people and, and uh, watch films watch, uh, you know, give presentations, you know, have faculty meetings, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot of interesting kind of ideas we have out there. But again, it's kind of just 
Number one, what are what what is logistically possible? When I first looked at the library project probably three years ago and probably even before that, I thought about adding, or I shouldn't say I, we thought about putting in some office space along that back wall and some, maybe some additional storage area. But again, it's kind of a, that's just one kind of avenue. So there's a lot of different things we're looking at for the library project, but it's exciting. Of course it is. All right, Mark, you're, are you moving to the field thing? <laughs> Just um, the the files he wants to show the books how they're color yeah, coordinated. Cool. Yep, here's the APR. That is so cool. Good job. <laughs> as as you talk with the architect about space utilization, Pat. I just keep going back to my experience with Taft was in the library. The first place I went was the library. Um, we had the meeting there. So, you know, as again, utilization now with the freshman academy, that, you know, is going to be the experience. But, but still, the, there's going to be kids who need to, and parents who need to get oriented to the varsity campus. So, is the media center the place that we are going to do that at? Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of the uh, that center space in the original picture. We envision kind of a, a screen that comes down. You could actually hold meetings with versatile space. Um, if we do the movie theater type thing on the other side, and then the school store on the other side, and the collection on the inside with uh, uh, with the you know using Chrome carts instead of having permanent stations a lounge kind of area where kids can kind of relax to read and do research. So there, there's definitely a lot in play here. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll definitely 100% have more details next month uh, after I meet with the architect tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, glass half full, right? The kids not being in school is sucks to holy high hell at this point, but, um, uh, but this you really is, couldn't um, have done this project now. <laughs> without you know with them being there so it, it's, it really it's gives of, us an opportunity to nail this and and really create a, a really modernized state, state of the state of the art state of the art is what it needs to be yes. yeah and, and, no half but kind of way but really put thought into this and make it our showpiece absolutely yes and it, it will be if if we can do what we want to do i think everyone will really be will love it it'll be a much uh modernized space that we utilized in multiple ways. This is a total afterthought. And I know, you know, it, do we have like, do we know if there's any kids who are interested in architecture or engineering that could be part of this project that we could, you know, have them be included in? Well, sadly right now, kids really are not allowed in the building. I mean, I know it's a catch 22 because- On a Zoom call, I mean. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I hadn't thought of it, but I, that's an interesting concept. Uh, I could, I don't know how I would even go about, we don't necessarily have engineering in class. Yeah. There's an engineering club that I'm aware of either. Just trying to see how we can rope the kids into this, make it a learning experience for them too. No, I mean, that's great thought, great idea. I can maybe explore where I would kind of elicit, elicit that. I'm not sure. But this is great something, work, something Pat, this is really possible. exciting. I mean, this is super exciting. Agreed. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's such a cool, cool space. Yeah. It could be something used for Facebook Live. It could be doing those live communication. You know, radio is, is, is slowly taking, you know, exiting stage left, but it could be podcasts and whatnot. It's, it's something that, look at that space. It just could be amazing. And I'm not talking just modernized. I'm talking about making this the state of the art. When they come in, they go, whoa. <laughs> That's what this needs to be done. I mean, just an opinion, right? Well, I tell you what, we're real happy to hear that because we're going to need the support, your support to get it done. So that's awesome. That's who do we need? Who do we need support from, sir? Well, when it comes to spending the funds to modernize it and to make it that wow factor, uh, we'll look at the scenarios and see where we get the funding and how we can get it approved and so forth. So that's what I'm referring to. Got it. Yes, Miss Fern. Good. Is Miss is Miss is our chairperson Fern's microphone like uh, off? <laughs> the last two meetings I've only I have I've had to read. So no, I'm just uh, not interrupting the conversation. <laughs> no, I, you're right. Like a college, 
uh, at, you know, uh, what's that called? It's a college campus. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also yeah. add something about the library too? Sure. Okay. We also have um, one of our uh, ex um, substitute teachers, Pat, what was his name? I think you, you knew him in, uh, a lot. Oh, right? Mr. Mr. Ed, you said Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> he's going to donate like 24 of these store, uh, stained glass windows uh, that are like really nice. That they're like um, anywhere from like 24 by 24 to 36 by 24, but we're going to hang them out in, in front of the library there. And we're also going to put them by door number four on both sides. So it's really going to going to make it nice. He's also donating a, um, he's supposed to, he's thinking about it now, but his like beneficial beneficiaries that are like I'm working with right now want to donate this really old grandfather clock that we want to kind of put in the middle of the library on the back wall there to kind of make that like the centerpiece when you walk in to kind of give it like a wow factor um, back there. And then like Pat said, that one side, we want to put like a 60 seat little amphitheater where it's like, like theater seating, um, three and three going across with an aisle in the middle, uh, going back like 10 rows on a slant so that it's like a little bit of a theater. So we could have our film classes in there. We can also have um, any, any kind of presentation, but I, I think that would be a, wonder, a wonderful addition. I mean, that's the wow factor. That's, that's Pat and I's goal is when people come back, they go, wow, look at this. You know, and so that that's that's our goal right now. We did change focus. So originally we were going to have a section in there for like media and stuff like computers. And we decided that, you know, what's best if we just have a Chrome cart back there and then they could just check out the Chromebooks and then sit anywhere because kids normally don't need to sit at a desk. They'll go sit on a corner. They'll sit at a, a, a chair and stuff. And so that's like a little more college. conducive. But we also need some charging stations in there, too. Yeah. So when, when kids walk in, they have places to charge their phone. And um, uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be the wild factor. I guarantee it. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't um, do all right. No, it's very exciting. Yeah. All right. So back to just an update on some other issues at the varsity campus, the roof leak in gym 222, the second one did not, we did not get water the last rain through. So hopefully it withholds this current storm and we can move on. In that regard, we also did another assessment of the water that goes into the boys' locker room, the old one, not the new one, obviously, the basement locker room. And we do actually have some work being done to change the water flow. And it was also suggested the, the grading of the land outside of where the spouts and the water comes down. So we are also making a little bit of progress on that. So uh, Tony, from Merrimark got a PO for that to move forward. So it will be, and that's just a test thing, right? Fix one thing, see what happens. Fix the next thing, see what happens. Because we were down there again after the last storm and I don't think anything was improved. So Tornado. He's frozen. Mm -hmm. He's under that storm watch. I am so impressed by that studio going. It is hey, nice, isn't it? Let me tell you. you. It's the it's the savage. Now. Green is the way to go. <laughs> I want you to invite me to your podcast. Oh man, if you only saw. Two DJ, two DJ. You you wouldn't you wouldn't understand a lick of things there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, I'm 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 vinyl. I come from vinyl generation. Okay. I don't uh, mean to be. You know, I know I, I keep. <laughs> Principal G talking about this. I just this is such a huge opportunity for us. Oh, I know. Uh, and I think because of the space itself, we're not talking about a locker room. We're not talking about a theater. This is everybody. This is the entire school body. This, this is the tapped community. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just for one particular section of our school. It's everybody. This, so if we're going to, you know, I agree with Gorin. State of the future is what we're going for. I, totally. I know we, you know, we don't have an, a blank check. But this is a showpiece I really feel strongly about that really needs to be thought out and because everyone uses this space. I agree. This is this is like boardwalk on a monopoly board. It's right in the center <laughs> of the school. We get it. You know, when we have that theater, I mean, our, our, you know, it's not like we just like to build stuff because it looks cool. Like our thought is that we have, if it, we have that theater in there, then we can have something that we've been wanting to have for a while called Parent University 
where we could bring parents in on nights and teach them how to use the Google suite or teach them how to, uh, you know, use Instagram or, or whatever, or check on, on things. And so, um, or even just to, to, to use the new Word documents in Excel and stuff like that. So uh, we're looking forward to that. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a wow factor. It really was. I'm, I'm looking to have like maybe even a coffee shop in there somehow so the kids can come in and have a little cup of coffee and, and sit down. And, and uh, you know, I want it to be like a, like a kind of a Starbucks, Starbucks, Barnes and Noble kind of a place. Um, that's, I think that would be, I think that'd be great. I want to say that he upgraded to Boardwalk because originally I thought you said Illinois. <laughs> no, not Illinois. Either. That's, I think, a red property. You don't get much, it's a red property. much on that. All right, Pat, you're back. I'm back. Sorry about that. We I left off know. with the water flow as uh, being monitored in the boys' locker room. Yeah, so that's just, a, again, one of those things where you have to touch and go and just kind of try to figure it out. So. Uh, step two, change the where it drains and then go on to the next thing. Um, oh, hold on one second. Hey, Ryan, I'm in the facilities meeting. Is this something to deal with that? It's probably Miss Lightfoot he's talking to. Connected. Yeah, what do you want? I'm in the meeting. Huh? Yeah, this meeting. I'm in the meeting. <laughs> You're talking to your dog, oh, Prince Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, Bob. If you start talking to whatever's in that aquarium, I, I might have to send Kathy Fern over there. Cactus. All right, Pat. All right. Yep, sorry, I was making sure Ryan wasn't adding something to his report, but no, he wasn't. Um, okay, so back to the lights. I was actually talking about the lights. So the outdoor lights are on the right time. They are working. I identified about one, two, three, four, five more spots, including the roof of door nine and door 10, that those light bulbs were changed. I believe they changed door nine because we had the yearbook pictures going on. So that was a good thing too from the, the engineering team. Uh, they were able to get that done, which appreciated very much. Um, it definitely helps to have a little bit of light when you're trying to do things. Um, all right, so other things I'll be talking about with the architect, I have him booked for about two hours tomorrow. Uh, one, the locker room I just described. Two, we'll actually explore the different tiers of potential concession stand out by the football field. Um, three, we will talk about converting the teacher's workroom into the college center and moving the teacher workroom to a different location. All of that is good stuff. So I'll be talking to him about a plethora of kind of projects that we have on the table. We'll also revisit the drama lab and try to see if we can get a step one or a phase one of that also done. And I think that based on my initial kind of meetings with people, I think the way to approach that might just be the electricity upgrade, but I'm gonna get the professional to kind of think what, 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 what they think on it. Um, but obviously we're gonna to have to build that slowly too because the original price tag went over 250, 275. So I'm gonna see if I can get one phase done of that project um, after I talk to him tomorrow. The cement work outside door three and four were finally completed. I, I will say uh, <laughs> I wasn't very happy. Oh, no. I'm glad I'm not the only one that has problems. <laughs> we <about> time. <laughs> so we're gonna, I wasn't very happy with the scope and we will keep looking at it and see what we can fix next on it. So it's one of those things that also might take a little bit of time. Uh, but door, the door three cement work, they got the handrail redone and now it's not dangling and that looks nice. So they did good on that part. Uh, that is, that was good news. Um, Oh, another thing we'll be looking at with the architect tomorrow yeah, sure. is the main gym climate control. I'll be revisiting that. The water fountain that was part of that purge back in May, uh, they'll be replacing the one by the auditorium. It's just one replacement, but again, we were just trying to not lose money. 
I'm trying to think what else is being updated here. I think I've touched base on everything. Driver's oh, you heard about the driver, driver's ed parking lot was finally done. I know uh, Mark sent pictures. That was great news after frustration for, you know, since May. Uh, they came in and they did it. So that was nice. It looks beautiful. Does Mark have pictures to share with us real quick right now? Because I don't think I saw pictures. Let me let me upload them, Kathy, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if I mentioned the quality of work, Pat, because we can't do this, you know, for another 20 no, years. So things got to we last us. We were very concerned about what now's they, the time you know, to fact, go after them. If Mark and I walked out there and we looked at the project um, as it was ongoing, and we met with the the owner of the company, and he assured us that this was 10 years, that this would last for 10 years. So Mark and I laughed that that would be about when we were leaving. If we have any luck, we'll be walking out as a, as a parking lot's collapsing. It'll be awesome. But physically, you're you're happy with the quality of the work performed? Yeah, yeah. originally we wanted it dug a little deeper, but when he explained what CPS and their, their process, when they submitted the bid, okay, for what kind of what we wanted, in order to really get a feel of what's underneath, they have to dig. And they obviously can't dig in a project that they ha don't, haven't been bid on. So what happens is they start digging and all of a sudden there's a problem. So they did a nice compromise where instead of going, that, according to the owner, it's over industry standards. It is, um, it's, it's over the industry standards, three inches down as opposed to what we were hoping was five. And again, he guaranteed 10 years before a pothole would happen. So, I mean, it could be just talk, but. Is that written in the contract, the guarantee? No, of 10 not year 10 warranty? years, no. I think it's three, but it's not 10. But that was just, I know, I know. Mr. Gusso, here, here, but, he, but Pat's right, because when we went out there, Pat, Pat and I were watching them do this, and Pat and I were ready for war with this guy. And we're like, <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, and he had a calm us down. We're like, this is not what we ordered. You're supposed to be going down, and we're not skim coating this thing. And he's like, whoa, 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 I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. So he talked us off the roof. Um, so I am, again, I'm really confident. On it. I, this is the third time I've replaced that lot. Um, so I'm really confident. But also don't forget, this lot's not going to be open like it's been in the past because we stopped that this year with, with the buses coming in. And then also the, the people that were, were coming in, uh, racing around the corner and then coming out. And, and our kids, a lot of our kids walk from, Natoma and Bryn Mawr, and they're looking down and they're zigzagging across the lot. They're looking at their phones and it's just a matter of time before someone's going to get hit. So no, I appreciate that. But open. the reality is it's not 10 years. Our contract governs right. a three year. So if something happens in year four, we're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. In reality. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody will give you a 10 year warranty. I, I just don't. Think right. That. But I just want to, for clarification, right. Right. he could tell you, I guarantee it for 20 years. That yeah. means nothing. If it's not in the contract, we can't hold them accountable. So it's good for three years. Okay. Um, the, the pool lighting, Pat, that was, I know it's minor in the grand scheme of things that you're doing, but that was, um, uh oh, Pat froze again. Uh oh. And it's when you freeze, you don't want to freeze in an, un oh, in an unflattering. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. All right, so we will, you know, hope for the best and go from there. Uh, but you gotta remember too, it was out of our hands. Like the fact that we got this done the way we did was they paid half. And that was an accomplishment for our parking lot. I mean, that was a pretty big accomplishment and it took a lot of, a lot of work to get it done, so. The last, um, not to keep, just to keep moving forward, the, um, it's, and it's minor compared into everything else you got going on, but the pool lights you were working on. God, he froze again, didn't he? <laughs> All right, let's get some entertainment value here. Thank you, Mr. Oh, no, I'm so sad about that. I'm, oh. R.I.P. Alex Trebek. Mr. Levin, you back? Man. Opery for 1,000. The school on the northwest side of Chicago opened up in 1939. Uh. 
What is tap, uh, Trebek? Very good. I'll take a, a potpourri for 800. Um, you like the potpourri category. What time does a school on the Northwest decide? Oh, ah, I got this, Alex. A uh, 7.30? Very good. Look, I'll, I'll keep going in the category. There he is. Sorry. I'm actually going to switch stations because the laptop's not working very well. Yeah. Um, all right. Did you Sorry. get my question about the pool, Pat, or it's the third time now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, just, I was getting ready to brag. This is, this is so cool. So that place used to be like the dingiest place in the world. I mean, it was horrible. And so I... Basically, we got this project done, and I went in there. It's like night and day, literally. Like it's it. The pool is so lit up and beautiful now. It's. Uh, it, I'm it's so done. Happy how it came but out, yeah. I done. can cross that off our list. That's done. Cross it off. Good. good and good the um, evergreens that the the evergreens that were planted. Um, yeah, the, the, the ones that they killed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do we have any update on that? Uh, I do not have an update. The guy is kind of good. Oh my goodness. The guy, I'm sorry, here I am. I, I'm not gone. I, I switched spots. I'm right next to the uh, network server. My son is out of here. He was working. I guess I, that's why I don't come home to work <laughs> because of this. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, the. Oh my God. What was the question? The evergreen trees. Yes. The guys kind of ghosted me, you know, the news, the, here's the thing about that. This is a company that we use quite frequently. And so the next time there's a job, I'm going to go right back to the trees. I sent them a follow-up email. Um, I haven't got a response. Uh, I, I got to tell you, when you work with Murphy and Jones, and, and that's this company, it, it's, it's a catch-22. We have a hard time getting contractors into the facility. We have a hard time getting good work. And they always come in the lowest. And Mark and I have talked about this. The frustration level is uh, sometimes I don't know if it's worth it. No. But, you know, and then they, they do part of the job. Like I've learned how specific you have to be with these people on the contract and so forth and so on. Um, but like even with the main office, when they, I wanted the satellite offices done and they're like, oh, that wasn't part of it. Even with the satellite offices and the main office project, it still was a good, I don't know, eight, 9,000 less than the other company, the second bid. So this guy comes in and he's always the lowest bid, but he's driving me crazy because, you know, and that company, we're getting stuff done, but let me tell you, it's a real PETA. What'd you say was the difference between him and the, the next? It was about eight, 9,000. And wow. Buckeye, yeah, like even combining the two when they kind of came back and said, oh, that wasn't part of the project. Yeah, I walked through all the rooms, buddy. So now I start listing everything as best I can to make sure it's on there. So, I mean, that's kind of what happened with the cement project back in May. And granted, that stuff happened kind of quick. And But I've definitely learned my lesson in terms of working with this company. I, I Part of me doesn't want to do any work with them anymore. I'd rather pay the extra $8,000. But I'm trying to be financially also, you know, get the best bang for the buck. So it's really a one of those catch 22. So to make a long answer short, they are ghosting me about the trees. I will continue to follow up and figure out. And, and the thing is, when we talked last time, I, you know, we talked about the maintenance and how it wasn't really spelled out for us and what we were supposed to do. So I, I wasn't like I didn't take any kind of responsibility and said, you know, let, what can we do to fix this? And he just he hasn't responded, so I will. I will follow up. It's on my list. Now I think that is everything, Chris. Did I miss anything else? Okay. That's what I have from follow up from last time. Good. Unless um, it, this is just um, potpourri and <laughs> principal G potpourri for two hundred uh, chain link fence. Uh, we're at. With campus, Mr. Guso. Uh, we're still on the varsity. Need to look at chain yeah. links along North. Yeah, Con. we're kind of we're kind of putting that on. Yeah, the that's right along. Now. Yeah, Pat, go ahead. Yeah, that's the North Cop fence. Uh, yeah. We, you know, it. We were going to do the decor decorative fence, and it was really expensive, like seventy five thousand dollars. It was going to connect the campus and the black. Yeah, we had a hard time swallowing that. Also. Um, we might look at an ivy issue, right, Pat? Maybe putting some ivy down there to make it look nicer. 
Yeah, we were looking at some other options, including matching the turf field was part of the other one too, because it's a little less expensive. Yeah. In terms of, but we're not moving forward on that project right now, just because. Well, and also it's Murphy and Jones with the, the same company owes me the trees. So I really have, and I originally had said that to him, you know, you know, we can start discussing the fence once we figure out the trees. So, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to get that one done because of the circumstances. That was all I had from last meeting for follow-up. Yeah. A lot of good things, really a lot of good things. It's nice. Mark, did you want to um, Oh, I do, I do. Oh, I, uh, I should have put this on the agenda. So the facilities report came out and I think we got a, I don't know how the scoring worked. I think we got a 76 or something. Can you explain it a little bit? I mean, the freshman academy should be like perfect. <laughs> so but it didn't look like it was because there were some rooms that were like blank, which I didn't understand. Well, yeah, for our- Can for you walk us through both? the facilities report for the freshman academy and for the varsity campus. Overall, it looks like we've got the green light to send our kids back to school. And there's no well, reason we, our kids shouldn't be back in school at this point. Yes, we have a good report. There are certain areas, especially on the varsity campus that, uh, you know, those, especially the smaller rooms that are within side, you know, rooms and stuff like that. Um, for us to get to 100%, and CPS mentioned about buying the HEPA filter machines and things like that for all the classrooms. So it's just a matter of getting all that done. What Airmark and what we'll be doing starting, well, really we've already started is preparing both campuses for hybrid learning. That Good. means reducing the number of desks. That means everything yep. that you're talking about, making sure, you know, when you have those like filters, they need to be really in the right spots that create the best flow. Um, so we have started doing that already. And that's on both campuses. I've met again with Tony today and we talked about the strategy. I did tell him um, right now our cluster program, kids are not coming back, but knowing CPS, the minute the numbers start to drop or whatever, they may on Friday at five o'clock say uh, they're coming back Monday. So I need to be, or we need to be ready to kind of be able to host them. So that room is, you know, for 142, we've met with the faculty We've kind of got what they would like to have, you know, in order to return. And we feel we can accommodate their requests. Um, and we are preparing the rooms for hybrid or for whenever that happens. On both Good. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, you I know, agree. the private schools are doing it. The suburban schools are figuring it out. Why we can't figure it out, CPS, I have no clue. I mean, the teachers I know are salivating to get back into the classrooms. I've talked to all my kids' teachers, unless they're lying to me. Uh, you know, they're chomping at the bit to get back in the classroom. Yeah, well, uh, it's a big union. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Because it seems like the majority of our teachers want to get back in for, yeah. for, you know, some level of one on one with these kids. I mean, all the other districts are, have figured it out, but us. It's frustrating, to say the least. And I have a friend I just have to, who has an autistic son, and it's, with our diverse learners, these parents, I don't know how they're managing because it's just, we got to figure out how to get our diverse learners back into school. I agree. I agree. Okay. So we're positioned good from a facilities perspective to get our kids yes. back. In. So there's no excuses. When, it's TAF's unsafe. We're ready to go. When we get the word, we will be ready. And explain yeah. how you're going to start uh, getting the classrooms ready right now. So we're ready to go day one. Perfect. We will be ready day one. We are reducing okay. the number of desks and laying out each classroom to be socially distanced. We've already had the hallways marked. Awesome. We've already had the signage put up. We've even in the washrooms, much to Mark's probably demise, is uh, we've had the urinals, urinals and toilets and sinks wrapped up so they're not next to each other. Um, the building, we, we will be ready. We're safe. We're safe. That's all I want to hear is that we're safe and we're prepared. Yeah, I'm, I'm got, confirmation. It, that is what what I'm hearing, right? This administration got plenty is of telling me that this we school got, is safe, right? Because yes. there's somebody that's that's mentioning that it's potentially might not be. So you're telling me here it is. Hey, Gordon, I'm the, I'm it the is most, the cleanest, healthiest it's ever been since I've been there in 17 years. Hey, Gordon, I'm the most compromised person right now as far as not like my doctor says. 
when, if you get that, it ain't going to be good. So I'm compromised and I walk around all the time with my mask on and I wash my hands, but I feel perfectly confident about letting our kids in there. If I, if I didn't feel like walking around, I wouldn't let one kid come through the front door and I feel like coming around. So I, I it's an unequivocal yes, we're set to go. Thank you. We are. Yeah. We are a very safe, healthy place right now, without yeah. a doubt. If people follow the protocols, I, you know, we are good. Yeah. All right. Can and I, I was sure? saying, we have plenty of PPE. We have plenty of sanitizer. We have cleaner. We have, uh, you know, the hand sanitizer, the dust sanitizer, everything. We are I love it. I mean, we just ready. have to be prepared because it's going to come the whole safety issue. Thank you, Goran, for just, it, it's blatant. Let's be blatant on this. Yeah. You know, um, so the fact that Taft High School at both of our campuses are, not adequately isn't the word I'm looking for, but absolutely yeah. prepared. Yes. Um, yes. Good. And that we have processes and protocols in place to ensure the, the, the safety of everybody who goes into those facilities. So just wanted to confirm, right? We go, we, go ahead. We go above and beyond. We do the CPS health screen and we have our own internal one that identifies the rooms that people have been in and those rooms are clean daily. And here's the other thing I think that's super critical is if parents don't want to send their kids back, they don't have to, right? At this juncture, no. Right. Yeah, can I jump on? I think we're running out of time. I want to jump onto a couple of new projects uh, facility. Yes. Can I, can I, can, may I, may I, Ms. Raguso, is that new under new business or what? Yeah, go ahead. We're good. Pat, Pat right. and I have our reports done. So let's move on to any new business. Okay. You can all see the lot, right? So the lot looks great, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Um, let me move on. Uh, I'm going to be asking for some money um, at, at the meeting today. Um, so, Gorn, you don't have to be there if you don't want to be there, and that's okay because. <laughs> Looking forward to my final meetings here. I know you do. Abstain. <laughs> no, but we we really need this, Gorn, um, and and everybody, but uh, everybody, everybody, we need this. Um, our field is messed up in the middle there. If, if everything is great, our, our two diamonds look great. We got the varsity field. Let me show you some pictures here, real quick. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the best part of the field right there. That's just in the, uh, if you were playing shortstop on the baseball diamond, that would be out there. Let me go a little bit uh, farther out. That's like the middle of the field right now. So right in the middle between um, both diamonds. Uh, this is where they used to play football all the time and all the other sports. And so the, the history of this really is that um, a while ago, all the grass was gone. So what they did, somebody put like little black pellets down there for some reason that they thought that that would help us and, and, it, and it really didn't. And then when, uh, if you can see those little white piles here, like right there, right there, you know, um, when they were digging the poles for the flag poles, um, someone on staff had asked them, and again, I, I take responsibility because it's my fault that I didn't know about that, had said, can you put the dirt over here? Because we need the dirt. And as you can see, it's not dirt there. It was like clay. And uh, like over here, I mean, you can see there's stones. And so we, we need this done. So they're going to they're gonna come out. It's going to cost $18,000. I had mentioned it earlier to you uh, in, the, in the spring, and I, it was the summertime. And I said, we could do it and get sod, and it would be like $26,000 but we weren't sure whether or not people were gonna come back to school or not, or we could wait to the fall, okay? And so right now waiting to the fall, um, we can, they're gonna dig it out. They're gonna go down like three inches of soil. They're gonna put grass seed there, and then they're gonna um, water it three times. So uh, that's the only thing I'm, I'm kind of iffy about. Like I'm good with, with paying it because we need to get it done. And right now is the best time to do it. Um, there's no sports going on. They're really, they're really, this is the most opportune time to get that field done because they're, in a regular school year, there really is no time because we either have sports camps going on or we have practices going on. So let's get this done now. So it's like 18,000 and some change. But what I'm, what I'm asking is, do we really need the $2,700 for the three waterings? And so that I'm not sure about. It, it, so it's like, $16,000, but if we want them to come out three times with a watering truck and water it, 
it's going to be an additional $2,700. So that's the part I'm really iffy about. I think I might be able to get the fire department out there one time to test their hoses and give us some, uh, they've done that for us before, like in a drought, they've, they've watered our fields and they also practice. I don't know if I could get them out there three times though. So that would be the only thing. So I'll take questions on that, but we really need to get this done. Well, if it's not watered, it'll die. So if you could only get the fire department out there once, what would you do with the other two times? Again, it's, it's a gamble. You know, it, we might have, you know, rain and stuff like that to, to take care of it. Um, I, th I think it's all about the timing. Like if we would have planted the beginning of October, it'd be a no brainer, right? The weather's been perfect. If you, if you plant February going into March and April, you should be okay also. But seed is, seed's a tough gamble. I mean, sod, they typically will give you some type of, uh, you know, if it doesn't take, they come out and fix it. But seed seems, I mean, that's, uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not, as you can tell by dead trees by the turf field, I'm not the most qualified person to speak on it though. So again, I'm not, I'm not a landscaper. I'm just saying that. Well, go ahead, Anita. If, if they, um, if we pay them for the three watering and we do everything that they tell us to do and that we're paying for, is there any kind of a guarantee if it doesn't work, will they reseed in the spring or is it just what happens, um, what happens? I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that. I can talk to them in the morning about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I can talk to them. I can talk to them about that, but I, I don't know. I, I think I really want to, I really want to jump on this and do it, but I, but I understand your concerns. Um, so well, I would rather, I would rather pay to have it watered if that's what the experts say to do okay. than take a chance because we had such a dry uh, time the last, what, two weeks now? That yeah. I, I, it's not even warm, but I would just be afraid to spend $16,000 and then not spend the rest to do what the, their experts say that we should do. You know what I'm saying? That's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Can this wait? Um, you know what? I, can I, you put it off until like February, March? I, I, I get, yeah, well, we could do anything, but I mean, why, why wait? Let's just get it and done it, so it's all ready to go by next year. Um, fall is supposed to be, from what I'm told, the best time to plant like trees and grass and stuff like that. Uh, again, I'm not the expert. Maybe uh, um, maybe Chrissy is. She's got some nice lawn behind her there. Maybe she can help us out. As far <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what that, but I've, I've been told the fall is the best to do all that stuff. Um, so I'm just like, let's get it done. We got some money in in, in the, uh, in the bank right now. Um, and let's see what happens. And then we're done with it, you know? But you can see that this can't wait anymore. Um, and it could wait if we if could. We gotta, but if we're gonna do it, we might as well do it when we know students are not gonna be on it. Exactly. Because if we, I, come, back, if we come back in January, yeah. and then you, you're reseeding, I mean, this is the time to do it if we're going to do it, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I do too. So, and one more question, Mark. I yeah. to change the subject, yeah. but um, I've seen, um, soccer players on the football field. Yeah, uh, is that somebody that pays us, or they just jump in the? Or everybody's what? jumping. The, everybody's jumping the fence. Yeah, I kick them out. Okay. I'm there. I'm usually there every day with Charlie, and and they're there, and I usually kick them out. And they're and they're really good about it. They really are. I'm like, come on, guys, we got to go. Um, you know, like a couple times it was getting dark, and I had a whole bunch of people there. Last last Saturday, there was a whole bunch of people in the back underneath the bleachers. So I, I went in and asked him to leave. So I think what, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, tonight's supposed to be 33 degrees. And then I think we're heading into winter. So I don't think that's going to be an issue for a while. I've been there when we've had some cold days and it's, it's crickets, nobody's there. So I just think everybody is taking advantage of this late summer that we've gotten and, and is just, um, you know, being crazy out there. So we got a lot of alumni football players that are playing out there. Um, uh, and, and really a lot of other teams. Cause when I go out there, it's like, I, you know, these, I'm like, where are you from? And they're from Niles West, they're from Loyola, they're from St. Pat's, they're from Notre Dame. Right. But, you know, once in a while, oh, we know guys that go to Taft. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, especially during COVID when everybody else is locked down and, you know, and exactly. they're jumping the fence. I know. It irritates me. Yeah, and they're not exactly not social distancing either. I mean, it's just, it's so obvious, no. but I, I mean, I'm not a police officer. I can only ask them, but, you know, I, I no, give I'm them not, my little I'm lecture. Not saying 
Yeah, I'm not saying that. There's there's yeah. nothing you can do. There's no. enough police to enforce it. So, is it always the same people? Pardon, Cap? Is it usually the same people? Not always, not always, but there have been the same people out there a lot. And they park in the parking lot and they're yeah. adults, you know, the ones I see. So, it's yeah. like being down at the lakefront, but again, exactly. there's nothing you can do about it. So, I just, I just, it was a question. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I'm so happy that really, I, I'm really happy we haven't had any damage. Like I'm, I'm still expecting, you know, somebody to jump up there and put like a bee in front of eagles. So it's the beagles and, and whatever and rip things down. But we really haven't had anything. We've got signs up there uh, by the booth because uh, we've got some some really good equipment up there that says like smile, you're on camera, camera and and stuff like that. Even though we don't have cameras up there, we, we, we are going to get some installed. But right now, I think that keeps honest people honest. Uh, so it, it's it's good though. Okay. So what do we want to do with this field? Do we want to do we want to recommend to the LSC to do it, or do we need more discussion, or or say no? What do you want to do? I I believe it needs to be done. My daughter. well, if we're comparing it from this from right now to next year, I think that right now makes sense. And if you've talked to landscapers and they say this is the right time to seed. I would agree with Anita that we need to seed and water, like just go for the water because it wouldn't make sense. We're taking a chance and then we've wasted right. our money. What's the first sport right. that would be playing on that field? Would it be baseball maybe in the spring? No, baseball. Uh, actually, football is February, March, but oh, we uh, can practice. Uh, yeah, it won't be ready. We might be able to practice. Yeah, you'd be correct, Gordon. It would be baseball. Right, and that's and then we probably have a, a girls softball out there too. So, um, on, on both fields, so that would be it. But I mean, we can always put football off there. We well, don't forget we got football, we got guys soccer, we got rugby. So all of those can can switch off on the on the field, as far as I'm concerned. But it's got to get done. It's the one. It's one of the only eyesores we have left on that campus, and it's it's a pretty big eyesore. Let's just I'm just like let's get it done and and then forget about it. You know, and, and you know, I, and on on a really. This field is a hazard, and yeah. the sophomores play on it. Football team practice on it. baseball. It is had a hard time too. It's literally a health hazard. That's <laughs> so, like, been a hazard for twenty years, man. Yes, and it needs it's to disgusting. be done. It Question. really needs to be done. Did yeah. are they besides seeding? Are they raising the low spots? I didn't know if I. No, they're they're, they're going to dig it out and put level. Like, they're going to dig it out oh. and put uh, uh, soil in there. And level it out, and then they're going to put the seed down. Then they're going to, they're supposed to put like that top on it that, that you put on uh, when you sometimes you get new grass. The fuzzy stuff, yeah. Yeah, the fuzzy stuff. So I think with, with the three waterings, and I can even ask the fire department over there by uh, Norwood Park to come out. Well, maybe we'll give it a fourth one too, uh, if they can come out just to, uh, just to ensure it. I think, I think that's our best bet. But this is, this needs to get done. This is, we've had, we've had kids and coaches that have actually, um, like twisted ankles, just walking across there. If if if, if I asked you to uh, to blindfold you, and I said I would ever want to do this, but if I said I'm going to blindfold you and you have to run across the field, you, you would you would fall yep. down, guaranteed, from the yep. holes and, yep. and the divots and everything. Yeah, it needs to get done. Okay. So this is a yes. Then we're we're good on this. Uh, to, well, we'll have more discussion. Suggestive questioning, Mr. Grishamber. Suggestive questioning. So this is a yes. <laughs> so so anyway i'll ask more questions and then we have to bring it to the lsc i'm just saying i guess we don't need to vote on it here we just kind of i've told you about it and then we could bring it to the lsc i've got yeah. one more thing i can talk about unless there's any more questions on this well, well i do want to be mindful it's, i want to be mindful of the facilities committee um time it's 5 26 we end in four minutes and we uh budget starts so um, let me give you let me give you one more okay this will take me, uh, this is an easy one, I think. Can you see this picture? Yes. It's like, it's Brad Pitt in the, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's me uh, by the Alumni Association clock. Um, so this is what I'd like to go with. Right now, I think this is 20, uh, I think it's 21,000 or something like that for the clock. We have to get some electrical from that light behind it all the way to the clock and a little bit of a foundation. So it's twenty one thousand dollars right now. I have twenty. I don't I see anything. So can someone? You can't. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. You oh, have to change your gallery. There it is. Got it. Got it. Got it. 
Let me take this filter off. No, I got you. Well, he got it. It was him. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the, the good news is I think I've been really, I've been really pounding our alumni over the last year and a half, and they've been putting in the newsletter and, and, and donations have been coming in. So right now we have $23,000 in donations. Um, so if more than enough pays for this clock, so I said, let's get it done. So when the kids do return, we do have that wow factor in it. So um, that's the other thing I'm gonna ask for. But again, it's paid for, it's got, we got the donations already for it. Um, I just think it's gonna be a great kids, spot right there. What, Anita? What? I said, I guess you don't have to ask this if it's already paid for. Yeah. I know, That's I know. Easy. Yeah, so yeah, this one is less, I mean, it, it, it's, you've got the, you raise the funds, the alumni association yeah. paid for this. So yeah. it's less to me controversial than the field, yeah. you know, when we've got so many other needs as well in the facility so yeah and it also goes with our vision that's why i'm bringing it up as facilities this whole area right there i really want my, our, my vision or our vision is to turn that into a kind of a quad yeah you know, because i really want that to be used eventually for lunch periods they can go out there and get some sunshine and, and relax a little bit i don't want to put benches out there um <clears throat> for the simple fact is when you put benches out at night it's like a perfect area if you wanted to vape or or, or it's like you, you get to see both ways. Anybody coming in, it's like, believe me, being an old partier like I was, this would be the perfect spot to, to tap a little pony keg out there and, and do what I needed to do because it's just a perfect area. See, I need to know the pony keg. But I'm just saying, so no no chairs, but I think the kids can can congregate out there. So it, this really okay. is like the cherry on the cake out there in this spot. So yeah, this, this one, if you, I mean, if we have to vote on it, do yeah. we have to vote on it? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, Kathy, do we actually, vote on this? Well, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a check for over $10,000. So, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And let's, let's move this to the, the, the main LSC meeting. Okay. And budget. And budget. Okay. I'm and done. budget. So, with that, I, if there's nothing else uh, left for the facilities committee, I'd like to adjourn. It's 531 so that Chrissy can start chairing her budget committee meeting. I just want to say thank you to Mr. G and Mr. Levins. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Uh, just amazing. Every time we come to these meetings, I see what you guys have done. Amazing work. Thank you. Thank you. And that's why Mr. Thank Levins you. got AP of the week this week. Nice job, Pat. <laughs> just this week, Pat. Don't get uh, too excited. Uh, All, right. All right. I'm adjourning the meeting at 531. All right. Okay, let me bye -bye. stop the recording and then start the new one for budget. All right. Okay, let, me, let me stop presenting here. Bye, bye, everyone. I'll, I'll, you have fun with the money. I'm going to go. Right. Uh, do something <laughs> <else>. <laughs>